Vodafone presents the pre-match. Ready to jump right into this pre-match, coming at you live and uncut from the Udinsa Congress Center. Welcome back to the ESL Pro League Season 8 Finals. My name is Trey Saranthis, and I'm joined by some esteemed members of the community here. Former pro players and very respectable types. We do have Natu, and we do have Sponge. And we're going to be trying to walk us into this first matchup, which is going to be Hellraisers versus the Renegades. And I, for one, can't wait to see how these Renegades fare. Chad? I guess, you know, the fact that they've come over and done a bit of a boot camp, and they're still working out the kinks of this new roster, as we heard what Kassad was saying about working out roles. There is a level of excitement there, because I think that Gratisfaction and Liaz, for the type of players they are, you know, definitely haven't reached anywhere near their skill ceiling. The question mark is, do they take away from the veterans' positions and now JKS and Azza having to play more supportive roles within the team? Obviously, Azza is the in-game leader. I was talking to him about this in Chicago, and I said, you're probably going to like this in the early stages because you get to direct the flow, you get to put yourself in the yeah. star positions, but it grinds on you after a period of time. So I think those teething issues are something to keep your mind on. Well, even more than that would be some teething issues over on the side of Hellraisers. Now, too, if we start to look at the Hellraisers, what is one thing that sticks out to you right away? Angel. He's been around forever. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, he, he, I, I feel like he's the embodiment of this team and just the way that they always play because he's a super aggressive player. And that kind of leads into this team trying to be aggressive as well. Sure. And also, I, I feel like they're super telegraphed when it comes to their T-sides. They used to be even more so. I think it's gotten better through as, the, as the time has gone past. Uh, but I feel like this team, you know, somehow they just haven't been able to really extract the maximum out of these players. If you think about it, Isa, uh, Voxic, for example, two amazing individually skilled players. And you just don't see them being able to play up to their potential as, as often as you would imagine. Well, we can see here, this is back in Shanghai, and Bondic was one of the players that yep. just featured right there. He has been the, the man removed, and yep. for him, Hobbit's come on in. Since Hobbit's come in, they've only played 11 games. So for the when you think about this, for the lion's share of the Pro League, it was Bondic. And then Hobbit played a game that he wasn't even meant to play based off the rules. They had to get Jonta to stand in and play the next one. So technically, he should have only played two Pro League matches for them so far, and in total, they've only played 11 games together. So the sample size of official matches for this new roster isn't really there but the expectation at least for me you got Voxic you got Isa fantastic players yep. stepping up to that third star which is what Bondic where he was before yep. needs to be Hobbit yeah and I think that's the next in line and that's about the only way that that makes sense kind of like the sense that we're going to be making throughout the veto process we've got them live here taking a look in we do see Kassad back on the side of the Renegades so that alone is an addition we could talk about but the maps are on us as we speak. Yeah, just a note here. So with the vetoing through ESL, the rule is like, there's obviously a timer. You can see that over there. They have to hit it every time a veto is made, but you're allowed two members of the team. Normally it's the in-game leader and the coach who are coming up. They have just opted to get Kassan to do it. So I guess whatever map he says, he's the daddy and they're going to be playing that one. Well, then again, too, I mean, I, I've even heard across other esports, like for example, League of Legends with, mm. with the C9 League team, they would let uh, the coach at the time, Charlie, do the, the bands and picks for the characters. That way it's never an inner team turmoil type thing when it came down to the veto process. Well, I think the thing is, like, if you are the in-game leader, you're probably going to want to have a rough idea of what you're calling on. But this, yeah. when it going to a best of one, you can see the bans are going to come out here. Neither team played Nuke, so the fact yeah. that Renegades didn't ban that as their first phase, I really like that. This means that they're happy to actually be a little bit risky in the veto. It's obviously no risk because you get a second phase, but that they're willing to let that be banned out by Hellraisers. It's either, in my opinion, going to be Dust 2 or... Mirage. Mirage yeah. is a comfort pick time and time again for Renegades, even though they don't tend to find too much success on it. It's a map they consider themselves to be good on. And Dust 2 is another one that they've played a, a, quite a bit. Uh, and Hellraisers don't mind it either. There we go. It's going to be Mirage. All right. Yeah, Mirage. Mirage. So you have said it just appropriately. And uh, good call, Chad. I'd say that's a good start to the day. You love when you get the vetoes right. Oh, it makes me feel real good. I mean, in a best of one, you'll, uh, you'll just end up in a map <laughs> yeah. where it'll be, you know, quite comfortable for both parties. So one would hope. Yeah. Well, I mean, things are not great. If it, if it <laughs> you lost the veto, I mean, you probably already lost the game. Ba basically, just go ahead and GG you right then. Yeah, and there. Yeah. No LO3 needed. But we can take a look at the overall view of these teams, the Renegades and the Hellraisers, coming in at a world ranking 21 versus a 15. These are the ESL world rankings, yeah. by the way. Just don't uh, get those too confused before we get stuck in. But this here has the map win percentage. Now, both of these teams, there needs to be a little bit of context given to this. Renegades have played this map 18 times with this roster. And for the likes of Hellraisers, they've only played Mirage a total of twice. Which would have been, what, some in Malta, perhaps? Uh, I Yeah, I believe so. They, they played against uh, Tyloo and they played it against NRG. 
So yeah. they won it against Tai Lu and they lost it against Denner. I think another interesting factor for Renegades also is that since they still have the same core players from the previous lineup, yeah. there's always bad tendencies, like a bad habits of the team kind of. Hey, what are you saying, doing. man? Um, <laughs> I'm saying that every team in this role, except for maybe Australia, has bad habits. Yeah. Okay. So how are you know obviously Kasai coming back into the lineup and then adding two new players? Are they gonna like kind of jump into the system that Renegades had before, or are the new players gonna try to refresh everything? And are the old dogs, old guard, if you will, gonna listen to the new guys coming in of you know how sh should we change some of the things that they, we do? Well, let's start to listen to some of the old dogs that is you two. Let's talk about some predictions, guys. We got Mirage, we've got the Hellraisers, and we've got Renegades. So what are we gonna do? I wasn't too impressed with Hellraisers, even though they made it top four over there in Malta. The thing was in their game against Big, the third place decider. They just played very loose and let their stars try and work. And they actually found That's more success, cool. in my opinion, than when they were a little bit more rigid. So if they come in with the more rigid style that they were doing in the earlier stages, I think Renegades can definitely be a shout in this with the preparation that I think Kassad would have done with the team. So Surely I'm going to pick Hellraisers. You're going to go Hellraisers? Wow. No, because I have to, because I can't pick Renegades. Yeah, that's true. Oh, you right. got yeah, well, you then I have to go for Renegades, because I was going to. I, I feel like, you know, with the uh, same words, basically, the Hellraisers still... They're, they're so new with Hobbit as well. I feel I was actually possibly surprised with the way the Renegades were playing for. Well, they could have that bit of spiciness and they could be coming straight from hell to take down these Renegades. And only time will tell. And to tell that time will be our commentators who are both Harry and Hugo. Guys, get us into the first game of the finals. Yeah, thank you very much, Trace. I'm, uh, I am just overjoyed that we're about to head into this one. I'm trying not to use the word excited anymore. I've retired it. It's over. It's done. We're getting into this Hellraisers versus Renegades over here on a Mirage and taking a look at this fight. Uh, maybe we don't have time for that because they're already down in mid. Granis Faction's been uh, tagged on up early. And actually going to get finished off, but Liaz, keen shot there, going to go to avenge his friend through the smoke. We are going to be back into a four on four. Hellraiser as well, and truly wrapping on in toward this A bomb site now. And Renegades, they're going to be feeling the pressure. Oh, Jacob, he's going to get rushed from close. Dead Fox finds that kill, and just like that, Dead Fox has opened up the A site. The players pushed up within it have gone down, and Renegades are only left up to two players. This will facilitate a bomb plant if Hellraiser's even have the time to do so if they don't dispatch of Renegades before that, because Az is also going down in the CT spawn. And just like that, it's Liaz alone surely an impossible clutch and hobbit cleaning up there it's dead fox with three and how is taking the pistol yeah getting off to a good start here on uh on mirage are the Hellraisers wanting to try and uh, get out the gate in a big way but uh yeah i mean i like uh, you know i'm excited to see some some of the stuff from this new Hellraisers squad obviously since hobbit came in uh saw him a little bit at the, at the uh, Malta event, obviously. He seemed like a little bit inconsistent to me. He was kind of either top of the board or just right down at the bottom. It was very in between. But, you know, I'm excited to see how he builds into this team and what goes on there. Hey, we got Rush on the right side as well. That's our observer for this game. Lovely man. Look at him smile. And Jacob, he's going to be smiling after that shot. Woxic's been picked out of middle. It's pistols in for the Renegades. They've decided to fairly force into this round with the exception of Gratis Faction holding money for that orb. Hellraisers, on the other hand, they've lost an AK and they've got to be just left down to Hobbit on one right now. He's trying to find picks up towards this A site, but with the bomb creeping up short into this triple B stack, if Hellraisers walk gung-ho into this one, it could be a bit of a mistake. We have three Renegades on the other side. All these dudes here ready to meet the, uh, the might of Hellraisers as they do stand. Over towards short, you do have Angel down in connector. He's going to be scouting out that A-bomb site just a little bit, and he might actually catch the timing, but no, East has already been dropped down at short. And now the penny drops. Hellraiser is going to start to rotate that bomb away and rejoin up with Angel, the man at the helm of this HR squad inside of the A-bomb site. JKS. Justin Savage going to try and go on in as he starts to push up. There we go. The D going to find the first Hobbit instantly in with the reply. Now just Liaz and Jacob. Dead Fox has been tagged down low. This AK is up on Liaz. That's still a chance for Renegades in this round, and Hellraisers know it. Yeah, Jacob, he's going to have such a tough time pushing in through this spawn, though. And Liaz, once he's found an AK, he might even be considering going for the save. That timing is so awkward. A moment of opportunity not going to be exploited, even though Liaz gets a kill. This bomb is already ticking. Hobbit's found his third frag of the round, and just like that, it looks like this one's going to be done. It come damn close. Hobbit, he could even get a fourth, or on the flip side, Jacob could run away with guns. It's not going to happen. 
Hobbit getting away with four kills in that second round and dealing with it fairly well for Hellraisers. Yeah. Uh, you know, that was almost very scary when we had that bomb go down on the A bomb site, right? Yeah. Angel was in the CT spawn and while he was low, he had to peek to actually defend the bomb plant from Hobbit and therefore he goes one for one when they're already at a disadvantage. That could have really opened up an opportunity for the Renegades, but shut down by Hobbit. The new boy on the block is uh, showing us what he's made of here in Odense. Yeah, right now it looks like he's made out of tough stuff. Uh, Let's see if that keeps up. Renegade's going to be just onto the pistols in this one. This should be a pretty clean win for HR. And, uh, well, let's see if it does at least amount to that. Woxic is going to get found instantly down here in mid. But now the rest of the HR guys go pushing on in toward A. And, yeah, they should just be cleaning this one up. Interesting thing to note, Woxic going to have the uh, money there to bring the AWP out. And actually, a couple of frags going the way of Renegades now. They are making this expensive. You, know, you think about that last round, only Hobbit survived. It's not like HR are going to be rolling in money as a result of that. Yeah, I'm surprised how Razors came into this round so loose considering how many players they lost to those Deagles in the previous. We just see that fast A play with a mid split on one SMG. And as a result, they've lost two, Harry. This is almost flipping over considering how low Angel and Dead Fox are. You'd really want to see how Razors start to be a little more careful. And they will do by smoking the connector and getting that bomb down. With nothing picked up, Renegades may as well go for this, but it shouldn't amount to too much. Oh, it is Hobbit, still padding those stats, still looking to try and move up the scoreboard here. And yeah, it is just Jacob left. And he probably doesn't win this, you know. I, you sure? I, I, you know, I, I, love the, I love Jacob, but uh, he's pretty much dead in this situation. How going to be picking up a third here as they manage to keep the majority of players alive. He's really losing those Mac 10 players early on. But now we get to see the buy come in from Renegades. Crucially, keep your eye on Grass Faction. He's going to have the money to bring that AWP out here early on in the CT side. And, Ooh, we even get to see this lovely new, uh, lovely new little leaderboard that's been worked on. Hobbit 190 ADR. That's how it's filtered for those wondering as well. It's not in KD. Top to bottom is ADR top to bottom. So, you know, obviously stats are stats, but that typically shows who's giving the most impact for the team, at least in terms of damage, that is. But as you said, Gratisfaction does have that open Hellraisers. They've not too successful on these anti-ecos, so they've not got a huge amount of money just yet and are staying on the flat rifles for now. That's fine. But Hellraisers, they might be met with a bit of aggression in this one as Renegades. Quad stack on that A bomb site with the AWP as well towards Connector, pushed in the ramp. We've got the old SK setup here. Fairly predictable, but Hellraisers won't be walking towards it. They'll be taking mid instead. That bomb's up in the B of B apartments, which does lead towards a potential B split later in the round. If Renegades don't decide to rotate a man off of this A site, this could be the round already done and dusted unless Liaz can go nuclear. I mean, let's see, can, uh, can Lias have the impact he's going to need to have here as they do start to push on in toward the apartments. And Moxic and Issa over here on short, doing a good job of keeping Gratisfaction's nose out of this one as he tries to peek on in. Lias really going to have his work cut out for him, and instead he just falls at the first hurdle. He's instantly bested there by Angel on the entry. Bombs already exited out from the apartment, so that's going to go down. And now these two players in short, they're going to be a real issue for Renegades to try and get past. They have to try and flush this out. Grass Faction will be there to find the first at the very least, but it's instantly returned, instantly traded by Woxic. And yeah, the save calls come in. Renegades, they're, they're leaving this one. They're handing this away a Hellraisers. They're just going to look to try and hold on to these weapons, do what they can with them into the next round. I mean, that was really a, a case of all your eggs in one basket for Renegades, right? Not only do they have four players on that A site and one man on B, they don't even try and contest mid. There was a smoke, I'm pretty sure, that cut off Azur in the window, but we had Gratisfaction by connecting with the AWP. It would have been nice to see Renegades try and catch that mid split off of Hellraisers. If you see those two players very deep short and you have no information on anyone else, you can typically make a safe assumption it is going to be a B split, so... Rene Renegades not getting the information they require, and as a result, Hellraisers, a nice fourth round on the board, keeping plenty of players alive. This will facilitate the AWP if they want to buy it up here and now. They know Gratisfaction did save his, so got to keep aware of that. It's cool we can hear the team. Yeah, comments. right. Yeah, yeah. I like that. You know, we can, we can, uh, you can, it's going to be great, you know, if, if, if anyone's getting mad stressed out, you know, if you've got Angel slamming his fist down, having to go at the rest of the team, maybe. Um, he doesn't seem like that kind of guy. But. No. You know, you know, you know, you never know someone till you know someone. You know, here's one kicked down on the ramp, and he's going to be looking to lead the charge early on for HR in this round as he starts to rear his head out in this position. He does have Easter as well, lying in wait up in Palace. So this time, a, just the early default, trying to find a pick here from HR early on, keeping a presence across all avenues of the map, waiting to see if Renegades try to hand any aggression. Gratisfaction, he might give them the satisfaction of that. 
Peeking on into the apartments and just dodging Dead Fox for the time being. Angel's here as well. And they know Angel jump spotted. He saw Gratis Faction push in deep with the AWP. That's why we have Hellraisers playing so passive in this position. Angel's trying to wait for him to move up so Dead Fox can get this kill. Gratis Faction, he may just give it to him as well, sneaking around the corner. Dead Fox has found the first opening. Hellraisers are already pushed out onto that A site in the meantime. And with Woxic finding JKS, Renegades have stacked up on this A site once again. The problem is they've lost B. And that's exactly where the bomb is heading. These two players, even if they fall, it won't make a difference because this is Hellraisers round through and through. Yeah, Renegades are getting picked apart. It's only Asset left standing. One of the uh, two original Renegades members left in this squad. And well, Az is going to try and do what he can. Love to get away with a, a rifle or something to work with here to the next round. And they do know where he is. They are going to be hunting him down. You can see this you know, trifecta that's been set up around him. And Azza, he's not going to go down peacefully. He's uh, looking to try and hold on to this AK. Sadly, Hobbit's gone on a very unexpected journey all the way through mid and has shut him down. So uh, that is going to be a fifth round on the board for HR. 5-0 up early on here, Hugo. They're off to a fantastic start on Mirage. Definitely. And I mean, DevFox, he picked up that AWP there, but he wasn't able to save it after he got killed uh, up on short. And I, I think DevFox still being on this team, despite Bondic being removed, is a really interesting talking point. It does definitely show that Hellraisers believe in, you know, it's not all about stats. And, uh, and you know, while, while Bondic definitely Pulled his, work, uh, pulled his weight in the numbers. DevFox offering a lot in terms of, you know, maybe behind the scenes and, uh, and supporting his team. But look at another fast A play for Hellraisers. This time, no stack for Renegades. Ooh, East is fully blind and he's lined up too. Ooh. Oh, he's going to keep on going. He's just shutting down absolutely everyone. Of course, this was uh, this was the buy round from Renegades. Not that you would know it. Luckily enough, Azza actually has just pulled them back into this in a very big way. And he's dealt with East of the man who really opened things up for Hellraisers in this round. Now it's... Angel and Dead Fox left standing. Not necessarily the highest bragging, highest flying duo of this squad. They have to try and keep their cool in the clutch. There's new and old join forces here for Renegades. It's Azza and Gratis Faction starting to peek on it from CT. Now, as that smoke dissipates, they still have one for the bomb. Dead Fox going to go peeking on out, and he's already dropped the point, man. That's Azza going down up close. Gratis Faction hasn't gotten off to the most suave of starts, and... That's going to continue in this round as he gets picked up. Another round on the board for HR. And you can hear from those uh, from those screams. They're feeling good about this one, Hugo. <laughs> what a confidence round from Issa as well. He was bottom of the entire team coming into that one. Then just runs into the A site and gets three headshots like that. I mean, when everyone else is already performing and you're 5-0 up and then Issa starts getting on the game, that's when you really have to be worried if you're Renegades. Well, a bit of a, uh, a, bit of a B stream update for you as well. Ooh. Beachy currently 3-0 up versus Astralis. Expected, obviously. Yeah, you know, the, uh, you know, arguably one of the best teams in the world versus Astralis, right? Yeah. So it's uh, it's always interesting to see how that one pans out. I, I mean, that's the scary thing, right? For either one of these teams, you go on to face either Astralis, I mean, or Vici, but I think everyone's edging for Astralis there. Yeah. Um, you know, if you are a big Vici supporter, I'd be interested in hearing about that. You can use the hashtag ESL Pro League to let us know some more. But uh, yeah, HR, 6-0 up here. You can see this buy that's been cobbled together. It's a bit of a partial investment for Renegades. They're looking to still get the investment in this next round. They will have pistols, some utility, some armor to work with here and there in this one. Even the UMP on Azza. They will really need an ace up their sleeve coming into this one because obviously with that pause coming through, Renegades clearly taking a breather to decide maybe what they want to do in this round and in the follow-up when they have guns. But Gratis Faction, he attempts to peek into window and he'll just get picked up early on by the AWP. First time we've seen that in the hands of Woxic and it's already come to good effect. Angel, oh, watch out for this under cruel and he does catch it as they're trying to go aggressive with the UMP, but only a dink coming through. And with two players already down for Renegades, things have not started off too well. Nah, this is not looking like one of the uh, the big hero rounds that the boys were hoping it would be. Now raises. Patient as ever in this one. They've taken a convincing man advantage early on. And even though Renegades haven't put up much resistance, Hal is still being very slow, very methodical in their approach in this round. Ooh. Hop it. He's, uh, he's feeling good. He's looking to try and show that, you know, he's still got what it takes. And indeed he does. Liaz. Oh, there's one with the Deagle trying to get the ball rolling. Sadly, Woxic is there in the back line to shut him down. And it's only Jacob with a Mag 7 and a 1v4. Now, it would be impressive if he manages to get this done. He is up in the apartments. He has wrapped around from behind. 
But you kind of look at where Hellraisers have been, the journey that they've been on in this one, and they should have the read that a man could be up in the apartments, and that is indeed what Dead Fox is now looking to keep an eye on. It's great to see Hobbit come into this event looking nice so far in the first game. We are early days, but he's really just been performing every single round, putting in multiple kills. Definitely what Hellraisers, Hellraisers would want, another fragger on this team. I mean, that seems to be the bread and butter. And considering we just saw this team at Malta a few days ago, and obviously Hobbit's opening game with Hellraisers was up against Gambit with Bondic. I mean, what a storyline there. And he definitely underperformed. He said he felt the nerves um, when, when I spoke to James about it. So I don't blame him, but he had a great tournament apart from that. That being said, Hellraisers 7-0 up right now. The nade from Devbox is perfect, combined with a bomb damage as well. That will take the kill. And this is just a domination right now, Harry. We've yet to see Renegades really find their footing. Maybe an aggressive round, maybe a CT round where they can try and take some control. We've seen attempts down towards that ramp set up on the A site. We've seen the B push with the AWP. They've not had too much success in middle, so maybe that's where Renegades will look this round. Yeah, I mean, the worrying prospect for the Renegades here is, you know, Mirage, historically, was always a very good map for them. So this is, uh, you know, I mean, admittedly, it's a great map for Hellraisers as well. You look at this team, you look at the guys on it. Issa, Woxic, these guys, like, forged in this map, you know, in a lot of senses. So. You know, I guess there is always that to uh, to pay attention to. Waxik early on is over here toward the B apartments and the rest of the squad gonna be there with him. Leaving Issa alone down at the ramp, looking like they're trying to sell a bit of a fake early on perhaps. And you think about how Renegades have been playing over here towards B. We've seen Gratis Faction put it, push into there a couple of rounds ago. So maybe Hellraiser are trying to play off of that. Now they don't get the aggression they were looking for early on. So now they do just go ahead and leave Dead Fox here to keep an eye on this position. They're going to start to rotate away. So, yeah, it looks like, you know, that B aggression never came through from Renegades. They've changed their mind. They're back to basics over here now toward mid. And uh, A ramp and Palace looking like they're going to try and split in toward this A bomb site. We did have that early window jump from Gratis Faction. So, he's up on catwalk right now. He does spot Hobbit as well, getting behind the top boxes. You can see this angle is to try and look through that little gap to see if Hobbit is crossed to the left or right side of the box. But in the meantime, uh, most of the enemies are coming in through middle from top to bottom. We've got Angel coming in through the underpass and Jacob, he's holding very, very close. He's got to be cautious here. There's three Hellraiser players on the other side, but nice shot from Jacob to start things off. Angel, he's been picked apart. Hobbit, great trade uh, on this T side, but the time is already ticking out of the hands of the Hellraisers. Hobbit's got to go big and he's already found himself too. The orb being removed from short around the edge of the corner and it's only JKS left standing on the A site. He falls and so does any chance of Renegades winning this round. That bomb plant will be com coming through. And Lee has a 1v3 needed now. He has a... Uh... Ooh, been able to find the first guy to go back in for a little bit more. It does just miss the timing onto Hobbit. That bomb isn't planted for ramp. And right now, that's where both players for Hellraiser is going to be sitting. Lee has just sadly doesn't have that information. He doesn't know. So he's going to start to back away. Look at Woxie. He had the Molotov as well. There isn't a smoke up on Liaz. So yeah, maybe it's the right call. He does just decide to back away. Opt to play things safe, holds the AWP into the next round at the very least. Regardless, an 8-0 lead for Hellraisers, there is absolutely no you know, shifting away from the fact that this is a phenomenal start for HR and a very, very worrying start for Renegades. Certainly not the uh, the big debut they were hoping to make here. In that audience, I never had to say it. I'm just going to come wouldn't, out and say that now. See, yeah. Wouldn't say it. I, yeah, we're going to keep working on that. We've been doing it all season, Harry, but it's just it's not... Like, there was a not time... been there. I, I feel like I've unlearned, you know, like there was a time where I, th I was like, no, I'm pretty good at saying this now. And then, you know, then you hear, I don't know, someone from somewhere else in Scandinavia say the name of it, and then you're like, oh, no, I'm awful. I yeah. can't say anything in other languages. This is a surprising opener for Renegades. I mean, this has been a team that since made, uh, since making the, the roster changes and bringing in these two young young players and changing the IGL role had a bit of success. They top four the Toyota Masters. They, uh, you know, had a decent star series as well, if you remember, on their debut event. So this is surprising to see them get, you know, just bullied right now. But Hellraisers are looking on fire. And look at that shot from Issa already into the bomb site. Again, another one from Issa. This man is unstoppable. And as are the entire team of Hellraisers. Again, another site taken with no resistance from Renegades. And just like that, a bomb plant will solidify their chances here. Gratis Faction should be saving this AWP. And JKS maybe the side-by-side uh, -side bodyguard. This just feels brutal at this point in time. I mean, you know, we... Uh... Coming into the day, I was very excited. You know, I was like, you know, we have, we have the, the game that should be the closest in theory to kickstart the day. What a, what a fantastic time that's going to be. But uh, Hellraiser is just picking Renegades apart. They have not been able to rise to the occasion to answer back. 
We uh, we can try and give a beast update though while we just have these two players double saving the. Well, actually, Angel, never mind. Let's quickly keep an eye on this because he's up here in Palace. He's very close to finding both of these players. He's sandwiched in. And JKS hears him. Angel's still able to pick it up, so they don't quite get away with both the orbs. They would have loved to have held on to it. HR. 9-0 and 0 lead, and they're feeling great. Hobbit, by the way, looks very smiley. He always does, but even more smiley than normal. I, you know, with good reason. He is just completely laying waste to Renegades at this point in time. This is a team of smilers, Harry. These guys are, yeah. are so enthusiastic, so like so enjoyable to be around when you see them at events as well. Issa is just such a nice guy, and I, I really like to see like Hobbit fitting into this team. I think it's a really cool young squad. So. I would love, you know, Hellraisers versus Ents, because then you have like <laughs> the most emotionless players in the world versus the most, you know, like, well, not the most smiley, but just a very smiley team. Different but, round start though for yeah. Renegades. They'll find that first kill. It's Granis Faction again up on that cap boost with a, a pick to Hobbit. Definitely what you want to see if Renegades are going to try and turn this around, because Harry, right now, the max they can get six on the CT side. That's not going to be great. Neither will JKS be going down on ramp, because Issa, another key entry for the Hellraiser squad. A one-for-one one going through, still doable for the Renegades, but a four-on-four four will favor Hellraisers. Yeah, it almost certainly will. Renegades going to really have to stretch this defense then. You can see that the, uh, the pressure is going to fall off from Renegades over here in mid. As they somewhat concentrate their efforts a bit more into this B-bomb site, as it is now peeking on down, he's about to get challenged by Angel. And if he wins this, you know, maybe Hellraiser, maybe they switch things up, maybe they change the plan and try and deviate away from B. You can see that bomb is just waiting back on the back of Issa, but sadly, Lia is going to get toppled almost immediately, and now that leaves all the pressure onto Azza here. He was in this short position. He's going to lose Jacob as well. azza has got to go above and beyond, and sadly, he's only good for one, so gratisfaction. He might have kick-started this round with a kill. Now he's got to find three more if he wants to pick up the first round for Renegades. And this is starting to just turn into a pug fest right now for, for Hellraisers. Not, not in a bad way, but more in the sense of, like, we've just not seen Woxic buying the AWP, and we've got players on over $10,000 on Hellraisers. They're just going for these, these fast burst plays, this looser style. And this is something Chad was talking about on the desk as well, saying that in that third place decider in Malta, it's a style they kind of adopted, and it wrote, worked you know, fairly well for them. They played some good CS up against Big. Losing that game, but still getting a map in the series. Either way, it's a 10 0, Harry. Hellraiser's calling out another timeout here. Even when you're winning, there's always things to, uh, to improve, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, why not? Even when you're 10 0 up, I, I don't know what more you could improve on. Um, but yeah, yeah. 11 0. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> that's the next step, right? You can see uh, Az is not looking, not looking too, too happy, but. You know, I'm just hoping Renegades can build back into this game because right now, you know, I, I was very excited. Like I say, you know, as you sort of brought up briefly when Gratis Faction and Liaz both came into this team, they're young talent, you know, fresh out of Australia. They have a lot of potential. Then, you know, as Chad was saying on the desk, they're nowhere near that skill ceiling just yet. So, um, you know, it was... No, 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 I can go up. It's better for me. It was like... Yeah, but very interesting to, uh, to to see how they were going to do, right? And then you kind of think about their online season as well. They, they looked good there, yeah. right? They, they had a pretty convincing time, I think, since adding those two. But it's just not materializing here in this opening game. Hobbit, he's laying waste to them down in mid. Angel's going to chime in with another. Jake and Will manage one at least. And that's an AWP retrieve, so maybe we can look not to the, uh, not to the Aussies, but instead towards the Norwegian to try and step up here in this round. The Hellraiser is just going to avoid that. They're just going to fast play the B site. That bomb getting dropped. There's no smoke down for Hellraiser. It's a bit of an error considering they know that AWP is on the A site now. Angels may get caught by the timing because Az has crept in through the connector, but he gets picked up. This is working out well for the Renegades, but as I say that, they lose the man on B. The only issue is still that bomb. The thing is, Hobbit has a full set of utility, so if he can get that smoke down on the connector, the position that Jacob was last seen, there might be a chance for the Renegades, but I like this play from Jacob. He won't hold on to the bomb. He's going to go check the flank, make sure no one's coming around, but he just spots the head of Angel up in the connector, and that missed shot might cost him the round. They know where he is. They've got him pinned, and they are yet to get the bomb, but they don't even need it, Harry. The Nade will finish off the job. Another 3K for Hobbit. What an opening game for this man. 13-3 to right now. Yeah, he's really in the Christmas spirit because he's just gifting rounds to Hellraisers <laughs> right now. And, you know, he left a, not a, not a, what is it, a lump of coal? He left a, a you know, nice hot HE grenade in the, uh, in the stocking for, for Jacob. Always the best thing to wake up to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's just great, isn't it? But 
Jake him doing a good job at least of you know almost giving them away back for that round. This time, Gratisfaction once again able to open things up for JKS, clearly fancying himself a bit more of the AWP action from the previous round. He's going to be donning that alongside Gratisfaction here. So maybe the double AWP setup, maybe that's the change that we needed to see for Renegades. Already they found themselves the man advantage for Hellraiser. This is an unusual situation. They're playing this a man down. They're going to try and test the waters over here at A, and that's where JKS lies in wait. He's found himself too. Jacob now chiming in with another. And Dead Fox left up in the 1v5, not fancying his odds all too highly. That bomb's dropped out in the open. And he does spot the man down in Sandwich. Can't afford to make a meal of this one, though, can Dead Fox? Top gonna force him out of the open. Double peak comes in though. As they're gonna go ahead and time that right. Peaks on out from the stairs position to uh, help bail his teammate out, and that does allow the safe cross, the safe passage for Jake. I mean, Dead Fox. Yeah, this bomb's out of the open. This site is swarming with Renegades players. JKS is there to shut it down. Three kills for him in that round. As that man is well and truly savage, and they're gonna find themselves their first on the board there in round number 12. Yeah, it took some time though. I mean, when it comes to these opening kills, Gratisfaction, he has been really the only man finding them so far for Renegades. Again, he picks up one in mid, but the thing is, he's also the man that's been losing a lot, sitting currently two and five in those opening duels. So while that's expectant of your opera to be taking the first fight, it's not been too successful considering the fact that Woxic has just been ruining him. For now though, again, we have that AWP in Woxic's hands and the double AWP up for Renegades. Gratisfaction, ri ri rinse and repeat. He's up on short in the smoke and they have already crossed but he's going to be a little bit still blind so has to fall back isn't going to be able to get that kill meanwhile double connector set up here for the renegades but Woxic very close to spotting Jacob he will in fact be getting tagged down to 10 he probably will just fall back at that one try and take a different approach maybe go towards the B apartments where Dead Fox sits it seems like with Hellraiser starting to rotate back towards A they still want to go for this split that bomb yet to be picked up though Yeah, that's just been left over in top mid. Gratisfaction does best Woxic in the head-to-head. -head. Might only have four kills to his name, but you think about all these rounds that have come close, and it's been on the back of Gratisfaction finding these opening yeah. picks. Angel in with the response, though. He is going to shut down Jacob. Dead Fox now testing the waters out at this B-bomb site. He's certainly got the attention of Renegades. There is going to be Gratisfaction and Liaz here. The two latest additions to this Renegade squad. That bomb, though, that's nowhere to be found over here toward B. Instead, it's doubling back through T-Spawn. Looking to try and join up with Issa and Angel. Dead Fox doing a great job of keeping Renegades' attention fixated at this B bomb site. And now, as it started to rotate away as well. Dead Fox has dropped his pistol as well in the B apartments. So that's going to make the noise that sounds like the bomb being dropped. So Renegades might have misinformation off the back of that. Yeah, they do. I mean, it prompted the rotation out from Azza. Now it is just JKS here. Oh, he's has missed a very big opportunity there to find himself the opener. There's only seven seconds. This bomb's going to go down, and JKS is trying to deny it. Liaz raining in death down from Short. And the bomb has gone down for Hobbit. Sadly, that's all he's going to manage. JKS going to line up three. Defuse will come in, and Renegade's going to be finding themselves a second round as they manage to chain two together. The only issue is, is it going to be too little too late? Because even if they manage a 4 to 11 half, it's going to be, you know, you're going to require an absolutely monumental T side here from this Renegade squad. Yeah, it's not going to be easy by any means, but JKS is starting to try and pull Renegades back into the game alongside Gratisfaction. It was the round of orps, as you can see. Four of the five kills found from Renegades with those big green guns. And yeah, I just that's a crazy miss from Issa, considering how well he's been playing in this game already in terms of his entries up on that A site. So. Definitely uh, would have cost the round there for Hellraisers, but they're not worried, Harry. They've got plenty of them. As you said, this is 11 to 2. They can just sit pretty for the time being. If they can close out this with an 11 4, Renegades still have a shot, but I, I, I definitely wouldn't put my money on them at this point. Yeah, I think that's a pretty, uh, <laughs> that's a pretty safe bet. That's very noble of you. But, you know. I always believe in the boys. Like, you know me, I'm, I'm a big believer in a comeback as well. We're British, so we always root for the underdog. And right now, Renegades, they certainly fit in that category. Since moving into this double up setup, though, they have looked very convincing. That was very much the change that's led them to find success. Hellraiser, they're going to try and cancel that out in its entirety by just rushing this B-bomb site. Past the incendiary, they go. Liaz. It's going to be good for one. Gratis Faction's already come rotating around, and Az is in position at short. This B-bomb site play gets completely shut down unless Issa can try and bail them out. 
Angel still up in the apartments has managed to get by. Missed shot from JKS, and actually that might cost Renegades de dearly. Because now it is just Jacob and JKS left up in a two on two that really never should have been. This was a, a 2v4 at one point in time in favor of Renegades. Now the bomb's down. And Ooh. Even as they tag up Angel, this uh, retake's got to be damn near flawless from Renegades. But this is pushed up. He's gone behind them, and Jacob's not going to check the corner. It's a scope's in that could have been her, but they might not have just realized this is getting one, and then Jacob just not even ready for the player behind. It's going to be Hellraisers again, and Issa with four frags into that one. Big flank coming through. You could see the second that pressure was being put on window uh, in the market there from Renegades. This has just started to creep into position, and... Uh, what a what a valuable position as well that will crush renegades they have another buy still coming through for this last round of the half harry but i can't say that things are looking good yeah i mean even this right like you look at that realization and yeah you know you can almost see it in jacob's player model's eyes the turnaround he's you know why is he there how has he even done that that's one of the you know that's one of those rounds that proper just tilts you but uh it's it's another fast play from gratisfaction over here in mid he's able to get up onto short but he does just miss the timing not the second time around though as he shuts down Hobbit. So once again, Gratisfaction handing Renegades the man advantage off of the bat into a 5v4 almost instantaneously. There's a gun now dropped at the top of mid as well. So if you're Jacob, you're licking your lips at that prospect. Now he's going to be throwing the window smoke. That does facilitate Angel to go pushing up into Connector. Renegades with the majority of their players over here toward this A bomb site. They have made the right call, and Hellraisers might go playing into that. Oh, but Issa's found that crucial frag. We needed him to do that if Hellraisers were to crawl back into this round. And Woxic even following up, catching JKS repositioning. He was trying to fall back, and now he's been caught out. Azaz had to push in deep as a result, and they don't have a Molotov for this position, but he will have the frag to uh, take down Deathbox. The problem is, he's just being surrounded, and Woxic's ho holding down the line with the AWP. A man advantage now for Hellraisers, and Issa has spotted Liaz up in the window. That's further information to play with for Angel. And while Renegades do their best, it's going to rely on Gratisfaction to try and stop this bomb from going down. He hit a flick earlier on, but this one will not be found. Angel killing Liaz, and just like that, it's a one-on-three with 24 health. Yeah, no armor behind him either, so for Gratisfaction... Oh, he's going to land that onto Angel, so maybe there's a chance for something, but no. You know, you get one impressive shot, and then immediately Easter is there to cut him down. That will be Hellraiser securing themselves a very convincing first half here. Even that feels like a bit of an understatement. As uh, they're going to be heading into this second half now, feeling fantastic, Hugo. For Renegades, it's pretty, you know, it's feeling a bit insurmountable if they want to try and build back into this at this point in time. Yeah, one player who has definitely been building back is Gratis Faction, though. It's still not quite top of the board by any means, but uh, in terms of those opening jewels, he, he was losing the first few. Now he's back up to, to four or five, at least, so uh, trying to bring Renegades into this game, but yeah, really, this is not looking too good for the Aussies. They are going to have a long road, and uh, maybe it's not the road to Odin, say, Harry, but it will be the road to success. 13 to 2. This pistol is so important. Yeah, you know, and one thing you kind of highlighted there and that we were bringing up is, you know, Gratisfaction being able to find those entries towards the end of the half. If he's able to keep that up now into the T side, then, you know, Renegades, they could build back into this, right? If he's able to keep on consistently finding that man advantage, that is such a, a, a huge kind of edge to take into your T side rounds. But that's going to be the big question mark for me is can Gratisfaction continue to step up in that fashion? Well, you got to remember, you know, he's been doing that with the AWP now. Now we move over to the pistol. I mean, if they lose the pistol, he's not going to have an AWP before this game is over, Harry. I, I'm I'm ready to call the 16-2 if Hellraisers win this first of the half. Yeah, I mean, another man who's having a fantastic show for Renegades towards the end of the half was uh, was uh, JKS, right? Yeah. He, he bought that double AWP out. It was the two AWPers having, like, a decent bit of impact, especially JKS, though. A lot of it's going to be very centric around if, the, if they can do that once again. And as you say... You know, you have to kind of cross that bridge when you come to it. First, you've got to try and win this pistol round. That's the first step in continuing on this road to Odense. Um, yeah, it's a long and perilous journey. No one knows that better than Trace and Henry. <laughs> I mean, they had a Skoda. Yeah, it was, a, it was a long drive. But in this round, Hugo, it's uh, going to be JKS bringing in the utility. He's got that, and he's going to be sitting pretty up in Palace right now does have that PT-50 as well. So he's able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these USPs just a little bit better. And you can see Liaz and Azza clearing out mid, slowly but surely pushing down. Sla sadly, Angel's going to go to catch the timing. Picks up the first man, walks it. Oh, Ooh, gets dinged down. And Liaz, he's flying through the air and he's still tapping on heads. He's still fighting kills. He's going to keep on going. 
as well as tagging Woxic down to four HP, he's the man who finds the equalizer, finds a four on four. Hobbit does what he can to shut down the players pushing into the bomb site, but he's only good for one. So that bomb goes down and we're into a 3v3. Some really nice trading from Renegade so far, and JKS is even going to go one step further, picking up one of the three kills needed to be found in CT, but this is finding all of them from the CT side of things. It's Liaz once again, and he may have to be jumping up into the air with that bomb being on the other side of the box. He's killed Deathbox, and Smoke's there, and this has hit the shot. Three on him. He's going to be able to close out the round for Hellraisers. That's the pistol going their way. Hugely important the Renegade to get a bomb plant. It facilitates this early by somewhat. They can get some rifles into this, but it is uh, looking so good for Hellraisers right now, and Issa seems to be on form. Yeah, I mean that's why I'm such a big fan of, of this of this move of Hobbit into this HR squad, right? Because now you have now you have that 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 triple that triple threat, right? The three players that can step up. You got Woxic, Issa, and Hobbit. We saw a convincing performance from Hobbit early on. He was looking fantastic. Then you know we haven't really seen all too much from Woxic just yet because we've got Issa now starting to step up alongside Hobbit, Angel, and everyone else having a decent showing of things as well. Um, interesting. Going to be. Uh, Three MP9s out over on the side of HR, but the buys come out for Renegades. JKS doesn't have armor behind that AK, so Aim Punch gonna play into that fully, and that's really not ideal when you're up against those MP9s. They are like a, I don't know, like a like a shredder almost. And he's paper. <laughs> What's paper to a shredder, mate? Just food, isn't it? <laughs> so <laughs> it's <laughs> Let's wait and see. Uh, Ooh. He's actually going to find one. So very, very well done from him. He makes the uh, the non-armored AK work as he does drop Issa, the man who had all the impact in that previous round. It's going to be Azza to pick it up. And Angel in with the trade, three on three. But now all these rifles retrieved. Jacob still applying the pressure down here on short. Renegade's a chance to find a round. Yeah, Angel, that's a big gun to pick up considering how many SMGs Hellraisers are playing with right now. It's going to now leave two rifles in play for this CT side and Woxix on the flank. He's cleared out the entirety of the T-spawn. The problem is they're boosting window. Now, while this can and should allow for that market split to be, it also gives them the option to take over the A site if this bomb can get up connected. The problem is that's going short and Jacob has been spotted in the window. Woxix could end this entire round here and now and Liaz has no idea what hit him. Shot in the back as he tries to push into that site and Gratis Faction, he'll attempt to bomb plant, but with only a Deagle and Dead Fox on the other side, unless the timing is good for him, Oh, I think someone called it. I think they spotted it. Yeah, he, he's clearly somewhat aware of this position. Dead Fox, oh, he gets shot in the back of the head. That has got to hurt. 10 seconds left as the bomb goes down and a one on two for Gratis Faction. Ah, oh, but sadly not going to happen today. We don't get to have the uh, Gratis Faction clutch that we've dreamed of. Hellraise is going to be finding match point here as they pick up a 15th round. And for Renegades, that is just gut-wrenching. They will have a little bit of money across a few of these guys to maybe try the uh, um, try get some rifles out. You know, we could see Gratis <laughs> Faction and Azra opt to throw one of those over. I can drop Famus. I can drop a Famus. Do you want, would you ever want to get dropped a Famus? Absolutely. Or would not. you rather just, you Pistol. know, give me a Deagle? Just throw me, a, yeah, like a USP. You know, you give me a Deagle, I'm going to have a, the same amount of impact as a Famus. None. <laughs> oh. well, Hobbit's feeling it though. We could just yeah. hear him say, give me AK, give me AK. He, yeah. he wants those kills, Harry. He wants he's, those one He's taken a commanding lead, is Hobbit. Do he's, it. Uh, yeah, I mean, he is just laying waste to Renegades. So you understand why? It's going to be the uh, full four man presence early on from Renegades over here toward A with Azza looking to come in late from mid. Hobbit though, here he is with that coveted AK that he asked for. He is going to fall at the first hurdle and Moxic doing what he can now from CT. Good for one. JKS going to go ahead and shut down Angel over in jungle. It's just Deadbox and Woxic left standing, and that bomb will go down to Renegade's amount advantage in the post plot. It's planted for ramp as well, but there's a man up in Palace and down in mid, so yeah, they can watch this from all three of these angles. Yeah, he's going to opt to try and hold close. He's the point man, and now he's going to be uh, well, six feet under. It's Deadbox and Woxic still making this work. And, Smoke goes down on the bomb. That's almost baited the peek in from JKS as they tap on onto it. He sprays through. Deadbox can't quite find the angle. They know where both these players are. It's only Woxic left standing and a 1v2 required. Tapping on the bomb once again. There should be no way back into this round for him. Time's ticked down just a little too low and JKS going to be picking that up. So four for him in that round and a third for Renegades.
Yeah, there was no kit there on the retake as well, which made things very, very difficult. You could see that's why no one wanted to stick the bomb in the smoke. That could have been an option there for Hellraisers, and especially considering the score. Uh, you know, on top of that, a missed Molotov, I think it was from Woxic from the CT spawn. He tried to throw it through that little gap to land essentially to the left side of triple. And what that would have done is forced the planter over to the right and hopefully into the hands of the AWP. Fortunately, it just bounces off the wall. And, and you know, that one missed Molotov, that could have been a winning round for Hellraisers. But they've still got plenty more. However, this probably won't be it. It's pistols and not much else. Woxic trying to catch the underpass push. As is going to take him down. And Death Fox sits up in the smoke as well. Hobbit's the only man with armor into this round. So really should have no expectation of Hellraiser's winning it. Especially not if Renegades find this pick on Dead Fox post smoke and just rush that B bomb site. It is completely empty otherwise. Well, let's see. Dead Fox, can he manage to find anything? Oh, he's done a lot of damage. No, oh, no, Renegades, this cannot be how this all falls apart. As a able to shut down one more, and they do flush out Dead Fox. Angels arriving on this wrap round, and they've seen him. Gratisfaction going to go ahead and cut the head off the beast. It is just Hobbit left standing now in a 1v4. It'll be Hobbit and the battle of these five armies as they look to go. Head to head down in mid. Here's this rotation back towards A. He's going to be given a little bit of time to get into a position to try and deal with this. A lot of bodies there, though, and that will be enough for Renegades to find themselves a fourth round. Yeah, slowly but surely. But again, when you're up against 15, all it's going to take is one monumental play from a Hellraiser's player, one mistake from Renegades. We saw how, you know, one missed nade can essentially cost you a round in some senses. So... Yeah, Renegades have really got the pressure up against them. If anything, actually, I say that, the pressure's probably off. Like, it, it, you know, you can definitely think that, okay, guys, let's just, let's just see what happens. Let's try and make this close. You don't have to really believe in it until it gets close. And, and yeah, that's when the pressure really starts to kick in if you're 15, 10 down after a comeback. But we got to get there first, and it won't be here again because of another pistol round for Hellraisers. They want everything, Harry. They want the AWP. They want two. They want rifles. Yeah. They want kits. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, everyone wants everything, right? That's one thing that we all have in common. Not disease. No, yeah. <laughs> I guess that's, I guess, yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, no, you've already stumped me with that one. <laughs> but, <sighs> oh, well. Uh, yeah, this round, Renegade's going to be finding themselves a bit pretty easily. Hobbit doesn't even see an enemy, just gets shot through a smoke. But as you were saying, the, the, the one problem Renegades are going to have, it's great that they're fighting rounds now, it's great that they're starting to build up some momentum, some confidence once again, but it, it just needs one mistake or one big play from anyone on HR. And we've brought it up time and time again. You know, you've got Woxic, Issa, uh, Hobbit. These are all three players who could definitely step on up and deliver. I mean, Angel even has these moments, right, where he just kind of... I know you see something change, like tunes out the world around him, stops listening to his teammates for the time being. Hobbit's like, drop me AK, drop me, he just does it. He ignores so him and he matches. tears everyone up. <laughs> he turns down the mix, you know, like mutes out the world. Yeah, if there was a team of big plays, it would be Hellraisers. Angel's at 20 kills as well right now. Iss is going to go one, maybe two above, and this could be it. This could be the breaking point for Renegades. There's only a couple of players left up, and they're walking into the meat grinder. The vegans on the other side not having a great time. 16 to 5 for Hellraisers. They will eventually close it out. That's kind of what we expected once they got guns in their hands. Yeah, I mean, weirdly, you called them uh, vegans. Now they're getting vegan as they, uh, they get <laughs> shut down from this one. Uh, you know, ultimately, great stuff from Hellraiser's Renegade's going to be uh, lacking a little bit in that sense. Now, hopefully they can recover, hopefully they can step things up, because that's certainly not the debut that these guys wanted to have here in uh, in Odin's. It's uh, yeah, a little, a little bit sad for me to have watched, I'll be honest. Yeah, but, you know, you always got to look, look on the plus side, and on the plus side, there is the fact that Hellraiser's just had come, came into the game storming today. Hobbit had a great opener, Issa was hitting his shots, and yeah, overall looked really, really good from Hellraiser's. Yeah, indeed it did, but uh, let's take a look at something else that looks great. We have the analyst guys standing by, Trace, Chad, Nati, how are you guys feeling? Uh, pretty sprightly, thank you, man. I was just kind of admiring your shirt. Kind of uh, reminds me of like a, a Christmas party for kids or something, like like it, a napkin or a cup or something. When he's so nice to us like that, though, yeah. I was just gonna wreck him. But the fact that they're so nice, <laughs> then I, I just I'll, I'll let him go. I'll, just, I'll you know. Well, you want to talk about getting wrecked? I mean, that's basically what we got now, too. Just remember, Harry's still young. He is that. Yeah, still sure. a little kid. Basically a child. Uh, sort of like. Uh, I guess looking at this matchup, I am glad that Hellraisers ended it in such a fashion. I didn't want this to. I didn't want Renegades to come back at all. I didn't want them to get that st string of three rounds. Didn't they didn't deserve, deserve it. it. Yep. They didn't. The, the fact of the matter is that was an abysmal performance. That was just nonsense. That first half with the two rounds they got, 
JKS was the winning win condition in those two rounds, who is not the primary orb for this team by any means, getting two orb kills in each of the rounds that they're able to collect. Now, when you think about that as a win condition, that's not something you're going to be banking no. on at all. You can never bank on that. Specifically, uh, specifically going forward, there's no way that you could even work a game plan around that. No, I mean, uh, if you go 12 rounds into the game and that's the first time you get an unanswered opening kill of the game, yep. it kind of tells a story on its own. And also, like, starting off the game, it felt to me like, you know, Hellraiser's managed to just bait Renegades into making these moves. Hellraiser's capitalized and didn't even really need to make any plays in the big picture. All they needed to do was just win those duels and they had those rounds in their hands. And moving forward, Hellraiser didn't even, like, play really great fundamental Counter-Strike where they would take map control, you know, take over connector, try to play around it, and then make a move after that. Instead, they would just plow in like 30, 40 in the clock. Yep. And for some reason, Renegades was still playing relatively aggressive instead of bunkering the bomb sites and trying to set up crossfires. Therefore, Hellraiser just, you know, they kept on capitalizing on the opportunities that were given to them. Right, you kind of run away with it at that point. Chad, I know that you're not necessarily in the uh, Renegades corner as of late, but mm. I guess we could start to talk a little bit about uh, why it didn't come together for them here. We heard that them being a little bit more hot in their boot camp and in their preparations and being ready to come into this one, but that was a really lackluster showing to open it up. I, I don't have an answer for why they were You're won't. Australian. Well, what do you mean think? I know every Australian. <laughs> Same wavelength, There's 26 man. million of us. You think I know everybody by yeah. name? Yes. Yeah, it's all They're the your relatives, box, basically, so. right? Well, in some way, I suppose we're all related. Yeah, I guess you, <laughs> you could be, right? Well, we well, are. We're going to take a venture in down to the way. Shire instead and maybe talk to Hobbit, who's going to be standing by with James Banks uh, following that victory. Pretty easily one-sided affair. Let's hear what he had to say. That's right. I've got Hobbit, who is no longer Gambit Hobbit. It's Hellraiser's Hobbit. <laughs> That was a pretty convincing first game. Were you guys just super prepared or, or just feeling in good shape? What was going on? We were just feeling some confident. And of course, we just fixed our mistakes on Mirage. Last, uh, last time we played it at... Uh, Multiple. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we fixed it and now we're feeling confident. Yeah. Now, you've joined the team, right? We spoke before and you were like, yep, you want to start doing the English communication. Yeah. How are you finding that whole change? Is it, is it easier than you thought? No, it's very hard. At the stress situation, <laughs> you're starting to forget some words. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah. And you can do some, you can do like some wrong communication, and uh, it's really hard. But I'm trying to fix it. Well, I was listening. I was standing around there. It was looking pretty good. Now, final thing, really, is just in terms of Malta and how you guys did. Was this just like a good warm up for you ahead of this? Yes, exactly. The Malta was like practice for us because it's like fresh team and yeah. uh, I just came and uh, it's my first tournament in English. <laughs> it was very hard. So it was a good practice. Well, this was a good start for you guys. I'll let you get on and get ready for the future games. Thank you very much for your time, Hobbit. Stunner, Chad, Natu, let me know what you make of that. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like they were pretty pretty comfortable at least. It sounds like they had a lot of few things that they wanted to work on and then they were able to kind of feel better going into this matchup, so to speak. I, I feel like they were given the opportunity to warm up in the game. Sure. Just yeah. the way the Renegades was playing and giving that great start to Hellraiser just definitely contributed into the outcome of the game because it just slid away so far early on in the game that there was not really much that Renegades could possibly do. One of the things which we noted, at least in the, in the pregame, while we were looking at the conditions, and I had stated that during the Malta event Supernova just over the weekend, when Hellraisers were playing looser and letting their players make more of individual decisions, I thought it looked better than when they were more rigid. You could see those signs within the first few gun rounds, especially when Renegades saved that weaponry. You had Gratisfaction pushing B apps with the AWP. The scoping was heard because Dead Fox was already up in that kitchen, called it to his teammate who just, you know, scurried away, didn't even show himself. Grat played for info, pushed in, died. Meanwhile, over towards A ramp, because of the way JKS plays A, these are the tendencies that you can quickly identify. He's super passive. He plays at Ticket Booth. So one of the players was able to sneak on out to Tetris without being noticed. He's always going to get a kill from that that kill, uh, that kill position in the mid-round, right? Because when the transition happens, he can either find more room or catch someone trying to push in for more information. And that round was basically for me, at that point, I was like, well, this game's over. And yeah, that was the yeah. fourth or fifth round. Landslidey, one might even say. But before we head to a break, I might want to tell you about the B stream, where in which it's 14-8 currently for Astralis. And Vici is not kicking this one off too hot and heavy either. Either way, we're going to be kicking into a break ourselves. And when we come back, we'll be jumping into a little bit of Liquid versus G2, where you can be assured that the storylines going into this one are just a little tangled. We'll be right back.